What's up everyone? So now we're going to play some Metis, and I'm going to show you what this character's potential really is. Um, I think it's severely, well not severely maybe, but I think it's pretty solidly underrated. And I think the fact that people don't, you know, understand the value of this character is a little bit disappointing. So, we're going to, we're going to talk about it. This character can spam at range, but you don't really want to be trying to do that when you're playing against something like a, like a gem sniper. Um, other than that, you can do it. Gem Sniper is just something that's going to one-shot you. This character's transformability is a lot faster than um, Ashimaru's, which is pretty cool. and makes you travel really fast. But, like I said, you don't really want to be trying to duel until, like, something comes within your range that's killable like that. Like, that's really what it is. It's not so much of, like, oh, I'm going to try and... Um, I'm going to try and duel things all the time. It's really just I'm trying to punish things that are feeding into me, essentially. For healing, healing is really where I want to talk a lot the most about this, this section of um, the video. And it's really about uptime. The more you're constantly healing something, the better you're going to do. Like, that is your job. Your true job is to heal. If you're not trying to heal, then you shouldn't be on this character in the first place. Like, I know it seems a little bit like, oh, well... You know, why are we... Why are we trying to, you know, force healing things and whatever and all that stuff, right? But that's just how it works. Like, every character does have a strength in this game. And if you aren't, like, taking advantage of the strength, then you shouldn't be playing the character in the first place. And this character's true strength is... Um, is healing. So, in this situation, I'm going to use this to start talking about, like, what healing priority is, essentially. It's a really, really important... Ooh, that was scary really important concept for like for metas basically what you do is when you're looking at your team they each have kind of a job right and each each player's job has an increased risk of dying or really an increased risk of needing to be healed to stop yourself from dying so something like sazabi that always needs to be engaged and always needs to be pushing an enemy team is really 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 powerful all right well it is really powerful right but it really is means it needs to be healed so what that means is when you're healing your teammates, everyone's going to be low, right? When a fight's starting, like you don't have that much healing that you can just constantly be healing people. So you have to focus on who needs the healing the most. And in most situations, it's going to be first the person who's taking a lot of damage, right? Obviously, if someone's if someone's taking a lot of damage, you need to be trying to um, trying to keep them alive. Like so if someone walks out really aggressive, oh, I'm going to die here, I think. Then you need to try and uh, try and heal them. Go, my friend. No, don't res. I'm resing. What a waste of a nano. Do something, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. This character does have a lot of, like, killing potential. It's just not, like, what you should be 100% focusing on. Because you have such a valuable healing skill, too. But, um... Anyway, the first one, you're going to be looking to try and heal something that's taking damage. Like, right now, this, this gun tank. So, the gun tank got hurt, or I was trying to support it. It was going too aggressive. And then I chose to try and heal that one. I'm going to throw this behind so that this guy gets poked out. This is exactly what you want to do with your uh, your turret, by the way. Use your turret to survive in these sort of circumstances. Use it to um, like throw it around a corner so it can see you and the enemy can't see it. And when a flanker pushes on you, you can kill it. But anyway, back to healing priority. The first one is going to be something that's low, like that gun tank. But then after that, you need to start healing teammates based on how much healing they truly need. Yes, every character needs to be healed, but the ones that need to be healed the most are the ones that need to press W and um, get in front of the team, like Asazabi or Melee Zaku, because they don't, they are not able to do their job without their healing. Something like a Gym Sniper can do its job without healing. It can do its job with one HP. Now, you know, obviously it's not going to be able to do as well, but it's uh, it's a huge difference. Also, you can see there I fed because I went and tried to brawl, to, I went to try to damage too much. Um, into something that can do a lot more damage to me. Something that can one-shot me, essentially. But... Like, a gem sniper doesn't need to be full health to be able to deal damage. Like, this guy, yeah, it helps him to be healed, but he can get a one-shot on these people with 200 HP. Whereas a Sazbi with 1 HP, 100 HP will insta-die as soon as it goes into the enemy. That's why you have to focus on healing that Sazbi first. So, it's going to be the tankier units that have to have their heals. Then it's going to be other things behind that aren't, um... That don't need as much. Just to give you guys an idea of like what, you know, a practical application of this is going to look like. First off, it's my gun tank. This gun tank is a bit tankier and gun tank's in front of me, pushing the front line here. But let's just say like, 
if I have this um if I have this gun tank versus like a Sazabi, well Sazabi really needs to be up front so we heal the Sazabi. If the Sazabi dies, then we're probably gonna look for something like an RX-78 next that becomes like our our sort of like pseudo tank. We could not walk into that ability. Becomes like a sort of pseudo tank. Something that can um that can take the place of our tank. And then from there, if that character dies, we're gonna look something like a pale rider. And at that point, like, you know, we're probably losing the fight anyway, but it's uh it's probably kind of devolved a little bit. But really, really important to healing those those tanky boys first. Because yes, while you're always healing, you're always getting value if you are healing. You can be getting a lot more value by healing the right person. And Asazabi just can't do its job without it. So as much as I'm gonna you've know, been ranting on this a little bit, it's a really, really important concept. Again, being able to um being able to heal things too is valuable. Or sorry, being able to res things is very valuable. Dang man, I thought I could kill him. Being able to res things is very valuable too, but every time you try and start resing something with your long range res resurrection ability, you are then losing the ability to heal something. So you have to keep that in mind too. Like, is that trade off then worth it? Um, and if it's putting itself, if something's putting itself in a really, really dangerous position, then yeah, that's that's not worth it, right? If it died in the middle of the enemy team, you can't res them, don't try. If it's behind a corner, start resing them, you know? And it's a very, very good ability because it doesn't force you to be in a very dangerous position to res. That's why Metis has such a good resing ability. Um, you know, best in the game, comparable with gym snipers, so. All right, so we're going for the second round here. And I'm gonna stop talking too much about the priority of things. I'm gonna talk more about my individual gameplay, just because, ooh, yeah, that was risky. But, um, yeah, so I wanna talk a little bit about like what Metis has to do naturally. Um, Metis has a situation in which, oh, I could have killed that guy. Metis has a situation in which it is forced to position based off its team. And that's both, well, that's just a pure negative, right? So I do like to compare these characters to characters in Overwatch just because they are fundamentally so similar. I'm gonna see if whoever goes first, like walks in next, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ult them. Just so I can, this guy didn't walk forward when I did it last time. Oh, you're getting it. Go buddy, go. I'm doing this just because he's aggro and I want someone to walk in. Yeah, there you go. So. First off, for people who claim that like you can't carry as a support, that's just wrong because um, I just did. What you have to do is you have to like be really insightful and pay attention to like who's doing stuff on your team. Like before I use it on the Pale Rider and he stood there and he res someone and then he res someone I was already resing and then just sat there and looked at me like I was stupid or something. Ooh. We do not want to try and go in that guy. We have a big hitbox. We take a lot of damage. But, um, you have to be really like insightful and paying attention to what's going on. In that situation, I could see that my turning gun and wanted to walk in and I had my ult. Considering there was no one on my team who was tanky enough for me to give it to like, just, you know, because I decided to pop it onto my turning Gundam. Again, my turning Gundam's been playing pretty aggro, so I'm gonna keep healing him more than my other teammates, just because I am confident that um, he'll play aggressively. Maybe I can get a res on this too. Nope. Again, he's playing aggro. Oh, wait, I am stuck in a spot. I think I just got stuck in the ground for a second. It's kind of strange. But anyway, I'm trying to farm my ult here so I can give it back to my turn A Gundam just because I did the same thing last time by popping onto him and giving him the ability to walk in and be a tank momentarily and walk into the space like, like he was trying to do in the first place. So we're gonna try and keep doing that. This ult is such a powerful ult that trying to farm it like as much as possible is a hugely good good rule. Go, Mr. Turney, go. Again, this guy just presses W whenever I give it to him. I should have held it a bit longer to be completely honest, but um, that's what you really want from the person that you're gonna be putting your nano onto. Kill him, kill him, kill him and res me. Hey, he and I are buddies now. Let's go. Okay, maybe sneak a res. Nice, snuck a res off of this. And then continue killing him afterwards too, so I can sustain it. There's a guy behind us. So if this was like, 
If I was Mercy right now in Overwatch, I could not have to have like bad positioning essentially. But because of the fact that I can't ha I can't heal from a long range, I'm stuck into a bad situation. Oh, the reses. They're going to go crazy here. I'll touch. Huge. Oh my gosh. This character is so clutch. I don't know. I really do think people underestimate this character severely. Go again. Take your nano. And he would have clapped that guy anyway. All right. So now we are in our, our defense here. Things are going absolutely crazy. I'm just trying to keep my little buddies healed up here. Trying to deal some damage too. These turrets really can do a lot during a match if you just toss them into the right spot. That corner is pretty good. It's, it's an aggressive positioning of it. I wouldn't really like recommend putting it there all the time. Oh, that's, that's horrifying. It is for... Oh, it's the wrong person. No. Well, maybe he'll pop off. <laughs> I'm going to body shot bandit right here. Clicking on some things. Maybe not. I did want to ult somebody. I mean, neither of those are really good ult targets. Gun tank's terrible, and... Gunning's a bad character in uh, Gym Sniper. Can one-shot regardless. It does get more sustain, though, but... Um... Yeah, wow, this is looking like a... This is like two two rolls are going to be happening on both sides. So like I was saying about this character, your positioning is determined by your teammates. Which is kind of tragic, just because it really does cause problems. It really does cause a lot of problems, just because like I have to be within a certain range, and if I peek around a corner even for a moment like that, it breaks. Which is really, really, really frustrating. And as you can see there, I can't really be feeling this guy effectively in that position I was, which is a better position that lets me be towards my team. Um, if I want to actually still heal him, just because I was peeking that, uh, that gym sniper. And that gym sniper will mess me up, for sure. I have to get this healing get back to my team, though. Obviously, I don't really want to be, like, out here usually but um yeah so again in this character you really want to position like as safe as possible it's fine to peek a little bit and throw some damage into my team but for example even here even though it's a good spot for me normally it's just it's kind of wow i did not expect there to be a guy walking by me it doesn't let me um position myself too like amazingly yeah, my team keep running away from me, and it's just because, like, they need to be doing things, and I need to be doing things, but the things that we need to be doing kind of end up um, contradicting each other sometimes, which is why I want them to change the, the, uh, the fact that it won't. I don't want that to break when you go around corners, just barely. Ooh. We do just barely survive. Again, like I said, priority target is healing Sazabi because he can't do his job without me sustaining. You can kind of like jiggle peek around corners like this. It's like the best way to do it because I am, it would be breaking otherwise, but you really do have to like do it very, 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 very specifically <clears throat> and intentionally. That was very close to killing me. I do want max damage on the point here, so I'm just tossing my ability onto the point. Like I said, usually you don't really want to be playing so hyper aggro with your turret because it'll just get broken. But in the middle of a fight, it's fine to just toss it out main. It'll start fragging out. It'll do a lot of damage. Usually it's best to just put it behind you. And um, putting it behind you will let it target things that jump onto you rather than having that be easily brokenable. Um, but still giving you really, really, really good value. If you're looking for some more Gundam Evolution videos, then make sure to check out my mobile suit guides. I made one for all original to 14 mobile suits, and I did a Should You Main Guide series also, covering the same mobile suits and talking about whether you should actually main them in Gundam Evolution or not.